Herkese merhabalar. Connect UK World Class University webinar serimize hoş geldiniz. Ben İmran Mehmet, British Education Bureau web eğitim uzmanı olarak bugün sizlerle Lani Allen'la birlikte bir diğer önemli İngiltere Üniversitelerinden Royal Holloway University of London hakkında bilgi aktarıyor olacağız. Ben sözü kısaca British Education Bureau, DEB'den bahsederek başlamak istiyorum. Ardından sözü Lani Allen'a bırakacağım yetkinimize. Sunumumuzun sonunda da sizden gelen soruları yanıtlıyor olacağız. Sunumumuz sırasında aklınıza takılan sorular oldukça chat box üzerinden veya el kaldırma butonuyla bizler de paylaşabilirsiniz. Bir saniye. Ee, çok pardon. Biz BB olarak Royal Holloway University of London'ın Türkiye'deki resmi temsilcisiyiz. E, temsil ettiğimiz e, üniversitelerin Türkiye'deki tanıtımlarını tanıtımlarına destek veriyoruz. Aynı zamanda üniversitelerin Türkiye'deki organizasyonlarını gerçekleştiren kuruluşuz. 2002 yılında Oxford'da kurulduk. İngiliz ve Türk kuruculara sahip bir yapımız söz konusu. 20 yıldır İstanbul, Ankara, İzmir olmak üzere Türkiye'deki üç büyük şehrimizde danışmanlık hizmeti sunuyoruz. Uzmanlık alanımız tamamen Birleşik Krallık eğitim sistemidir. Üniversitelerin giriş şartları, başvuru süreçleri e, dahil olmak üzere birçok aşamada e, öğrencilerimize destek sağlıyoruz. Tüm danışman kadromuz e, Birleşik Krallık Eğitim Sistemi'ne hakim. Bu konuda e, düzenli olarak eğitimler al, alan bir uzman yapıya sahipti. E, Birleşik Krallık'ta e, toplam 130 tane devlet üniversitesi bulunmaktadır. E, biz bir, bir olarak e, bu üniversitelerin 90'ının Türkiye'deki resmi temsilciliğini yapan kurumuz. E, temsilciliğini yaptığımız üniversiteler için de e, tamamen ücretsiz olarak danışman hizmetimiz bulunuyor. E, bizleri e, bir sonraki etkinliklerimiz, webinarlarımız için e, internet sayfamız, Instagram sayfamız ve Facebook üzerinden e, takip edebilirsiniz. E, aynı zamanda İstanbul, Ankara, İzmir'deki e, ofislerimize de bu numaralardan ulaşabilirsiniz. Ben şimdi sözü Lani Allen'a bırakıyorum. E, Sorularınız olunca sunum sonunda yanıtlıyor olacağız. Thank you, Lenny. It's yours now. Perfect. Thank you, Imran. Um, let me quickly share my screen. Just give me one second. Um, so hopefully you can all see that. So uh, my name is Lani Allen, and yeah, I'm from Royal Holloway University of London. Um, so briefly, this presentation is just an introduction overview. Um, to Royal Holloway, so there's not too much detail. If you have any further questions, um, there's a chance for Q&A. So as I'm going, um, do feel free to put any questions you have um, in the chat or Q&A box. Um, and also you can have my email address as well. Um, so this presentation, I'll just introduce Royal Holloway generally. So a bit about us and our campus, where we are, some of our facilities. Um, and then I'll go into courses and overview and entry requirements. And um, also, if we have time, like so a little bit, um, some top tips for personal statements, as I'm aware this is an area some students um, can struggle or find it difficult. So I thought I'd offer you some information about that and then a little bit about um, scholarships. But any questions that you have as I go through, um, do feel free to, to pop it into the chat. Um, before I start properly, um, two things to mention. Um, the best way to find out further information about us is to attend one of our um, open days. Sadly, obviously, we have a few in person, but they're mainly online still. So we have a postgraduate event if you wish to join that on the 25th of November, it's 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. UK time. Um, and then we do also have a online open day. Um, the open day is more for undergraduate students um, on the 8th of December. 3 to 6 p.m. UK time and for both of them you have the opportunity to chat to academics, do taste the lectures, um, film to campus tours, chat to students and staff like myself as well and um, so I definitely would recommend attending if you're interested just go on our website and you'll be able to find both of them on there to register your place. 
Um, so I've got a little video here to share with you. The sound might not work, but don't worry if the sound doesn't play. It's not a problem. It's just some background music. That was just a little overview of Royal Holloway. Here's some more facts and figures. I won't go through all of them, um, but one to draw out is we are a top 25 university in the UK, and we have 87% student satisfaction rate. I mean, this is higher than the national average for the UK. I think it's 83, 84%, um, and it's higher than most Ross Group universities. And we are based in a campus, which is usually ranked one of the most beautiful campuses in the UK, as you can see. So on that note about our campus and our location, so we are part of the University of London. We're one of the colleges that fall within the umbrella, similar to King's College and Queen Mary's, for example. However, unlike them, we aren't actually based in central London. Um, our main campus is in Egham in Surrey. As you can see on the map here, so it's close to London, it's on the outskirts, but we're not in central London. As you saw in the video, we are about 40 minutes by train to London Waterloo or about 20 minutes by train to Clapham Junction, both of which are major hubs to get around London and the rest of the UK as well. And it's a really good location. Students like the fact that they get the best of both worlds with us. You get the city side, you get London, you also get the quieter and perhaps more slow paced life as well out in the country. Uh, we are super close to London Heathrow. Um, it takes about 10 minutes in taxi to get us London Heathrow, which makes it really easy and convenient for students to come and go during the holidays. Um, to us. Um, in addition to that, because we're so close, we do also offer a free airport pickup service for our international students. You do have to book a place, um, but it is free and it's obviously just quite nice to, uh, to when you arrive in Heathrow to be met by a friendly face with other students and you'll go to the university together and you will know where you're going as well together. Um, we do have a campus in central London, um, but it's just one building and only few um, postgraduate courses are taught there. For example, our um, digital marketing MSc, but most is on campus as well as the accommodation. So this is our actual location, really green, really leafy. We're close to the Thames. We're very close to Windsor and Windsor Castle where the Queen resides, uh, Virginia Water, Thought Park, if you've ever heard of it, um, really green, really leafy and it's well connected as well. You don't need a car to get around campus or to get to and from all these places. The public transport links in this part of the country are really good. So train and bus is cheap and, and quick. So as you saw a little bit in that video, um, we are a campus, we're a very green campus as well. Um, so we are set in 135 acres of woodland. Um, and it's a very beautiful campus. Um, you can see wildlife, you can see deer and all sorts um, on campus. Um, and it's, yeah, it's all in one place. So we're not spread out across a city like some other universities are where they have you know, several teaching and buildings are spread out and accommodation spread out. You might have to get a bus or cycle um, in between your lectures, for example, but thus that's not the case. Everything's all in one place. It probably takes about 20 minutes to walk across campus. Um, so everything you can see here in purple is accommodation. Everything in blue is teaching, and then everything in the red is like the social. So the SU, the Guinea cafes, the gym, for example. So all in one place um, and all super convenient to get to. Just some more images. So I'll see this is our famous founders building. Um, students can actually live in here if you want to. Um, you can live in the top floor um, and you get to share a turret, which is quite, quite cool. Um, but we also have a picture gallery, a multi-faith chapel in this building, a dining hall, 
and be like Harry Potter. That's what students like to call it. And we have obviously more modern facilities um, as well. So it's obviously got um, Davison Building as a library. It was opened, I think, three or four years ago. So it's still very new. It's huge. There are tens of thousands of books um, in the library. And of course, you've accessed even more online resources. Um, there's also special archives and collections you can have access to. There's also um, free laptops you can borrow for the library, the library. There's a, a Starbucks in there. It's open to 4 a.m. as well. So caffeine fix, you can always get it. There's also the study spaces for just yourself or groups of people. Um, we have obviously loads of cafes, loads of restaurants. We have cuisine from all across the world as well on campus. We also have like a um, shisha, shisha bar on campus as well. That's called um, Stumble Inn, although I think they might have changed the name recently. Um, and uh, what else do we have? And yeah, loads of food. There's a shop on campus as well. Of course, got a sports center. Um, so they offer classes and obviously pitches for tennis, um, baseball, basketball, netball, you name it. We've got it, rugby, football. Um, we have a mock courtroom for our law students. We've also got a TV studio and um, the green screen and VR. We have an observatory, for example, and we also have an MRI scanning unit for our psychology students. Um, so lots of facilities for all the courses um, on campus. And again, as I mentioned, a bit of this already, but the library building also hosts um, the Student Services Centre. So any questions you might have about um, accommodation or your transcripts or exams, um, you can turn to them. We've also got our careers service, which I'll go into a bit more detail in a bit later. As I said, IT resources and support. We've got the Student Union Shop um, as well on campus. And again, Sports Centre. Pretty much, I think we have about 35 sports teams on campus. So for the majority of sports um, are covered, it's all on campus in our sports centre. Clubs and societies, um, we have a lot of them. We have about 135, 140 and growing. Um, and there's everything for every student appetite. And it's a great way to try new things, make new friends. It's a whole host of ways. and um, if you find there's not something that you, you can't find a site that you want to join, if you've got an interest that isn't listed, then you can create your own. You just need to get two friends and together you can create your own um, society. So there's plenty of going on on campus. Um, the SU is also really good, really active. There's always something going on. And particularly now things are back to normal almost on campus in regards to online, I'm sorry, in-person events. Um, there's always something going on every day, in the day and in the evening to suit kind of um, all, all interests. Um, support and welfare is an important one. So with regards to student numbers, which I haven't mentioned yet, um, we have about 11,000 students with us, um, which is quite small. And that's a small university, some of the bigger universities in the UK. Um, for example, Manchester, Hertfordshire, majority of universities actually. It's not um, surprising to have 80,000 students, for example. Um, so we are small. We have 11,000 students. Of that 11,000, about 20% are um, from overseas. So they're not from the UK and EU. So it's quite an international campus. And quite a few of them are from the Middle East, particularly from Turkey. Turkey's probably um, one of the overseas um, regions that has the most students with us. There's probably a couple of hundred at the moment across undergraduate, postgraduate and um, PhDs as well. Um, but because we're small, small university, it means our class sizes are smaller. So it means you get a better ratio of student to staff, which is really good and really important to help you in your studies. So you get that better like one-to-one -one support to the average class size. So in the UK, your study is usually divided up between lectures which it can be quite a lot of people um, and then you might have labs for example if you're doing something like computer science or biology something practical and then you're going to probably have also seminars and tutorials which usually are so you have your lecture where someone stands at you and talks to you for hours and then the seminars are a chance for you to break out and discuss in smaller groups what you've learned and um, with an academic and that at Royal Holloway, the average class size is about 10 to 12 students um, for that. So it's a really good ratio. And you, so you get your chance to ask questions, have your voice heard 
Um, so that's one benefit for us as well. Everyone also gets a personal tutor. So undergraduate or postgraduate, you get someone who is an academic from your course and they stay with you for the whole time that you're with us. Um, so if you're doing a master's, that's one year. If you're doing an undergraduate, that's three or four years, depending if you want to do a year in industry. And they stay with you. So it's really good. It's someone you get to know really well and they're there for um, more pastoral support. So yes, if you're struggling with the course, they can offer you help and, and let you know where to go, who to speak to. They can also give you, of course, any, any questions about careers or networking. Can you put me in touch with anyone? Or if you want to do further reading. So they're that, just that person in your department you can always try and touch base with. Obviously, we've got a career service. We've got peer guide schemes. This is obviously fellow students. Um, we have our student welfare teams. So that's the more disability intellectual services, mental health and wellbeing. And um, they're always available to speak to. We have our international student support and um, these are the people that will pick you up from Heathrow if you want to and they also run events throughout the year for international students and they're also there for any um, visa issues for example they're usually the people you would turn to um, with that and they can also support you in applying for visas and applying for the um, graduate route visa or applying for other types of visas and um, they're there to help you do that and then we have CDAS which um, again they can offer Obviously, you would have met our English language requirements. If, for example, you're struggling still, they can help you with English language skills then. And they can also support you in essay writing, for example, if you're struggling with that, or if you're struggling with referencing. Um, so there's lots of people you can turn to for, for extra support, which is really important to, to mention. I'm going to particularly highlight careers just because it is, it is so important. That's why more and more students are coming to university to, to set themselves up for a good career. So also like most universities, um, we have a career service. And of particular note is we are part of the careers group, um, which is the largest career service in Europe. Um, so when you're a student with us, you have access to that and it's such a great resource. There's always stuff going on on campus about careers and they can range from um, you can book appointments with our careers consultants just to have a chat about anything you want, any advice, where should I go in a career? They can look over your CV, they can help you prepare for interviews, do practice interviews, everything like that they can help you with. We also, of course, have employers come to campus. And these can range from local employers looking for part-time work whilst you're at university, and they can range from working with us as student ambassadors, working at Thorpe Park, for example, um, to perhaps, you know, part-time or internships, bigger companies. Um, we also have, you can have one-to-one -one appointments with employers. So recently they ran a, uh, a fair for law students and you could book one-to-one -one appointments with employers. Again, they had a fair for computer science students. And again, you had the likes of KPM, Jean Deloitte come down IBM and you could book one-to-one -one appointments with them as well. Um, and uh, more importantly as well, um, so you get access to all of this support um, and also once you leave, once you graduate, you still get access to this career service for two years once you've left, um, which is great anyway, but I think it's even better now, again, kind of in line with the new graduate route visa, you obviously get two years to, to work or find work in the UK, and um, it ties up perfectly. So you still get access to that um, award-winning career service. So that was it for kind of the social um, student experience side of things. Um, I'm now gonna briefly talk about our courses and this isn't by any means all of our courses listed. We've got um, a couple of hundred courses. This is just giving you um, an overview of the departments that we have. Um, and then so you can do some further research into the actual specific courses that these departments offer. But it's just to give you an idea. Um, here are some statistics. I won't go into too much detail, but I'm aware today there are some people, for example, interested in um, economics. So the top 10 in the UK for economics, for law, a very stimulating course. Um, for psychology, um, we are fifth in UK for research quality, so lots of statistics. We are quite across the board a well-ranked university in our in our different subjects. So, 
and also going to our study programs. So obviously you can join with us directly as undergraduate student and study for three years or four years if you want to do a year in industry. And again, for postgraduate, you can do it one year full time or two years part time or two years again with a year in industry. But if you just miss out on our entry requirements, we offer a foundation year. We also offer international year one and we also offer pre-masters. Um, so I won't go into too much depth, but just so you know that they are options that are available to you. If perhaps when I later on go through the entry criteria, um, you think you'd miss out or you might just miss out. Um, those are some things to bear in mind. We do offer those other ways in, in to study with us. Um, this is just our landing page for international students. So if you have any kind of questions or anything you're not sure, sure about and find out more, this is a good first place to go. Um, you can find it in just studying here, international students. But of course, any further questions, do feel free to reach out to, to me. So firstly, and probably our most popular school, particularly with international students, is our School of Business and Management. There are over kind of 40 different areas that you can study here, ranging kind of these areas, particularly undergraduate level, you can make the degree completely your own. There are about 40 modules you can choose from and you can pick what interests you and try new things. Or no, I, I know I definitely don't like accounting, so I'm not gonna study anything to do with accounting. Um, it's really good, you can build your own individual course um, and same and postgraduate it is more, more niche and specified however but a really strong school a really international teaching staff a really international cohort and excellent links to industry um, they are in business programs students have gone on to to multiple employees not just the big kind of top four that students think of but we also have the benefit of being in what's called the Silicon Valley of the UK so it's quite a techie area um, it's kind of where like BA systems are based, for example, and more upcoming companies. Um, those are students go into placements in there as well. Um, so really strong department, particularly for our experience. We then have our School of Engineering, Physical and Mathematical Sciences. So computer science, our computer science um, department is actually the oldest in the UK. It was opened in 1962. The computers were probably the size of houses. Um, but luckily they're still keeping up with the times. And it's 19th in UK for graduate prospects. We have electronic engineering, that's our shilling building, which is our electronic engineering building. It's completely self-sufficient. It runs itself, um, which is really cool. And that was opened in 2018. It's still quite a new program, but they're developing more and more um, courses to go with it. So now we offer like a project management, um, MSc in engineering, for example. Information security, maths, physics, all fall under that school. Then we have our School of Humanities. It's more self-explanatory. So history, English, classics, language, literature, and cultures. This falls under this school. And again, it's a really strong department. So top 20 for history. Uh, English is actually fifth in UK for graduate prospects um, as well. Our School of Law and Social Sciences, of course, Law falls under this um, school, and actually our law degree, law LLM, LLB, is first in the UK for graduate prospects. So again, they've got clearly very strong links to industry, very good at, I think, um, prepping students to do conversion courses if they wish to. Um, so really strong pro, um, course. And as I mentioned earlier, we've got a mock courtroom as well. That's one of the many features that, that we have for our law students. We also offer economics, politics, international relations, and social work fall under this school. And again, really good departments. I know lots of students like economics who, when they left university, went straight into really well, well paid jobs working as economists. Um, it's a good school. The school of Life Sciences and the Environment. So we have biology and sciences. I know psychology is particularly popular subject um, for Turkish students who are coming to us, um, particularly our clinical psychology um, program, particularly at master's level. Um, but we have different, we offer different, we do applied psychology, forensic psychology, or you can just do psychology and, and make your mind up which area interests you. But it's fifth in the UK for its research intensity. There's always new interesting publications coming out of that department. And we are 13th in the UK just overall for psychology. 
in addition to the MRI machine that we have, which I believe is, we might be the only university that offers it for psychology students. You'd usually expect to see the MRI machine for medicine students. We also have a baby lab, we have a sleep lab. Um, and I know if you want to do neuroscience aspects of it, we, they do also um, have access to actual human brains as well. I don't know what they do with them, but we have them. School of Forming Digital Arts. Um, so this is a really strong department. So fifth for music, seventh for performing arts, and 20 for um, media and film studies. Again, because we're such a beautiful university, it's also used for filming quite a lot. It's not unusual to be watching TV and see Roy Holloway in there all of a sudden. Um, and so these students kind of get a heads up the film is occurring on campus. They can come and I'll witness it firsthand. So most notably, um, Roy Holloway was in the Avengers Age of Ultron. Maybe try and watch it again and see if you can spot it. It's only there for 30 seconds, but we're in there. So that was an overview of the, our schools and our departments. And again, please do look at our website for more um, specific course titles, because there are so many. We also offer joint honours, for example, um, so you can do, you know, maths and English. Um, so do have a look. Um, main things to, to note that we don't have is um, we don't have medicine um, and we don't have it that's kind of hospitality um, related and for engineering we only have electronic engineering those are probably three things I should reiterate um, when it comes to courses so for undergraduate I've listed just a few here obviously you might be studying something completely different to what I've listed here but hopefully this covers uh, most of you who are attending today so I've got A levels and I've got IB and off I've got the Turkish diploma um, so Turkish diploma is achieve a grade of 75% overall from your final two years of study and some subjects for example computer science um, might they have subject requirements so you'd also need to have studied either computer science or maths, for example. Um, and if they request that, you need to have an 80% in those specified subjects. So 75% overall for computer science, but you need an 80% in maths. Um, so again, please do check our website for more um, specific breakdown. But this is just the minimum, just to give you an idea of the kind of grades that we look for, for in students. Um, when it comes to IELTS, this applies for both undergraduates and postgraduates. We require 6.5 overall with no subscore lower than 5.5. Again, it can vary. Um, if you want to do English, for example, they require usually a seven in writing, for example. Um, so do have a look because again, it can vary, but that is a rule of thumb is the absolute minimum that we would accept. For IELTS, we do, of course, offer uh, pre-sessional programmes of 12, 8 and 4 weeks that you can do if you fall just short of these um, uh, entry requirements. And of course, we also need a personal statement and a teacher's reference as you'll be applying through UCAS. As I said, I mentioned personal statement a little bit later, but those are our general minimum entry requirements we are. Um, guaranteeing this year because the pandemic can still be disrupting students and schooling you might be online you might be in person but there might be another lockdown I mean who knows what's going to happen and um, because we're aware the pandemic is something that is still very much around and can impact people we are guaranteeing um, that if you get one grade lower in your actual results so I don't know completely how it translates in the diploma, but it'll be the equivalent. So say if you were to get an offer and you actually have a grade of 75% overall with 80% in maths, for example, and you've got one grade lower, so you've got perhaps 70% in maths or 70% overall, um, we would still honour that offer. Um, it's a bit easier to explain also for A-levels and IB, but whatever the equivalent would be for whatever you're studying, whatever one grade lower might look like, and we would still honour that offer. And um, so that's something to kind of help perhaps uh, put your mind at rest. Um, for postgraduate courses, so the equivalent, if it's asking for a UK 2-1, is a GPA of three out of four. Um, and equivalent of a 2-2 would be a GPA 2.8 out of four. We do have a list of a small number of universities. I think there are 20 of them. 
um, the we classify as the top 20 universities in Turkey. Um, for example, I think Cork University is on there, um, where we do accept slightly lower range requirements. But do double check with me if you might be attending one of those universities and I can let you know what it is. It's, so 2.1 would be GPA 2.8 out of 4 and 2.2 would be 2.6 out of 4. Um, but please do apply still and obviously we can let you know. But that's, again, just a rough idea of what the minimum edge requirements would be for postgraduate level. Um, really quickly, I won't go into too much detail, um, just about personal statements. This is somewhere that I know shouldn't struggle and I'm someone who reads quite a lot of personal statements. So I thought while I'd have you, I might offer some top tips from a, a university perspective and from like an admissions perspective and what academics are looking for, having now worked with them for a couple of years and kind of understanding what they're looking for. So I'm sure you all know what it is. It's basically just a short essay about why you are a good candidate for this course. Um, we want to know the person behind the grades. We know you're academically capable by looking at your grades, but the personal statement is just to find out a bit more about you. And essentially my top tip is that when you're writing it, think of this in your mind. So academics are quite um, anxious, nervous, paranoid people um, because they essentially, when they're looking through candidates, they want, they want to make sure for you mainly that you are going to enjoy the course, that you're going to fit in, that you know what you're getting yourself in for, that you know what you're going to be doing, studying, why you want to do it. And they want to read a personal statement and be like, yes, this person knows why they want to do MSc clinical psychology. It's obvious because they're scared. You know, if you can't convince them of that, they're scared that you won't enjoy it, that you won't do well, that you might drop out. Um, so think of that when you're writing it, just think, am I convincing this academic that I'm going to do really well in their course and I know why I want to do this course and what this course is going to require from me? Um, so that's my top tip. They're, they're paranoid, but for good reasons. They've got your interests um, at heart. So they're looking for multiple things. None of this should be surprising. They want to know you can study independently. And um, this particular one for UK universities in general it's very different to, I don't know if any of you are considering US universities, um, but they're very different in teaching styles. UK universities, you have your set hours, maybe 10 to 12, maybe 16 hours a week would be like teaching. Um, and the rest is up to you. And they'll say, you know, you should expect to do 300 hours of self-guided study, for example. We want to know that you're able to get on with that. We can leave you to it. That of course you're motivated and high achieving, intellectually capable, that you can contribute to university life, that you have significant subject knowledge, that you have the potential to succeed. And more importantly, all of this should show that you are interested in the subject you are studying. Uh, find the right balance, it's usually 70, 30, academic, non-academic. Um, you can break that down to four paragraphs. So an introduction, and then your biggest paragraph should be like your subject knowledge interest, why this course, where's it just come from, any reading, any extra work you've done. The next paragraph should be on like work experience, any skills that you have, and then the conclusion. So the biggest chunk should be academic. And then not academic, like I said, what the skills and experience do you have? And most importantly, how are these relevant? I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the personal statement, well, I did want to highlight one thing, which is the last part, the extracurricular activities part. This is where students struggle. Um, and they often just list, for example, I play football after school and then full stop. And to has the admission student to be like, and what? And so what? How do you match that extracurricular um, skills, experience rate to skills? So for example, if you do wider reading, you could say, look, it shows I've got critical thinking, it shows I've got subject knowledge. Um, that's how you kind of think about it. It shows I've organized. If you do part-time work, what can it possibly show us? That you've got initiative, that you're good at communicating, that you've got, got good teamwork. And this is kind of the things you need to think of and think it back. So therefore, why does having good teamwork, good commitment, good determination mean I'm gonna be a good student or succeed on this course?
that's what they're looking for when we say talk about your extracurricular non-academic studies. So try to think about those skills. And it's good when it comes to writing CVs as well. This technique in particular, the STAR technique, in interviews, this is what employers are looking for, that you can answer a question like this. So if you can start to write questions like this, you're setting yourself up to do really well later on in interviews. And the last technique I'm gonna just show you um, before I move on is the so what test. And so to make every example relevant, when you read it back, so if this person had just ended off the second point, at the weekends I play football, I'm the captain of my local team, this has enabled me to develop skills in coaching, leadership and communication. If they just ended there, reading that as an academic, I would be like, well, so what? And there they've linked it back to, it means that I'll be useful as an undergraduate student. And lastly, I'm not going into detail, but here are just some, some top tips for editing a personal statement. And this applies for both undergraduates and postgraduates. Both, you have to write a personal statement. Um, so it's good to have, particularly a postgraduate, probably is more important than undergraduate because we really want to see and why you selected this course and why you want to continue your studies in this area. Um, quickly going to go into accommodation. I'm not going to go into detail, but just to give you, like I think most importantly, just an idea of cost um, and price. This can obviously help in your decision making. So we have about 10 or 11 accommodation options um, and they range in price quite significantly. So the cheapest is just over three and a half thousand pounds for the academic year. And the most expensive is just shy of nine thousand pounds the academic year. So quite a big difference in the things that make a difference between not so expensive and expensive is generally if it's newer, if it's en suite, if it's self-catered, it's usually more expensive. Um, so those are generally why. Um, just a note, at Royal Holloway, all of the accommodation apart from one, um, you have your own bedroom, you're not sharing a bedroom with anyone. It's only your founders where there's um, some, like a chance you might have to share a room. Um, but all the other accommodation, it's your own bedroom and you just, it's do you want to share a bathroom? Um, and also how big perhaps are you sharing, how many people are sharing your kitchen with? And they're the only other things you need to think about. And just it's priorities given to international students and um, accommodations guaranteed for first years in particular. Um, my just advice to you would be if you are particular either about what you want, so you know, you're adamant, I definitely want an ensuite, I definitely want to be catered, or budgetary reasons, you know, you can only afford perhaps on the lower side of the, the scale. Um, do apply for accommodation as soon as it opens. Whilst we guarantee it, you are going to get something. Um, the most popular um, choices do go really quickly, and we can't be usually quite good. If you apply in the first couple of weeks of it opening, you usually get your first or second choice. If you leave it much later than that, um, yeah, it becomes much more likely. So, accommodation usually opens in the springtime. So about March, April next year, it will open for applications. To apply for accommodation, you need to be holding at least a conditional offer. Um, and you have would have needed to make us your firm choice. Um, so if you're undergraduate, your firm choice, not your insurance choice. And if you're postgraduate, you just need to have confirmed your offer with us. Um, so it's really important to attend lectures and webinars like this now to start to make your mind up if I were okay. So I've applied to like five universities. If I were to get offers for all of them, where do I go to try and make that decision before March, April next year, if you can. Um, but it was accommodation will still be there for you, of course. But if you want to get your preference, do apply sooner rather than later. Um, lastly, from me is scholarships. Um, there are a lot that we offer, um, particularly at postgraduate level. So there's far too many here for me to list them all. Um, what I would say is again, the best place to go is on our website because most are awarded um, by subject. Um, so have a look, see if what you're studying is on there and, and have a look at scholarships and what the entry um, eligibility is. 
Um, but we do have two scholarships though that are um, general. So not subject specific, you can be studying anything, just as long as you're an international student and um, you can basically apply for them. So if you're an undergraduate, it's called the International Future Leaders Scholarship. And it's now actually um, 6,000 pounds is now the award amount. So that's 6,000 pounds off your um, first year tuition fees. And to apply for it, um, you apply, we look at your grades, and you, again, you've got to write a separate personal statement. So um, there'll be kind of criteria on the website saying what you need to write about um, for that scholarship application. And then for postgraduate, we have our principal master's scholarship, um, and that is £4,000 off of the um, year tuition fees. Um, and again, similar um, application process, similar criteria that we that we look against. So that was it from me. I'm aware there's probably quite a lot of content in there. And if you have any further questions, my email address um, is just there. Um, and of course, there's opportunity now, I think, um, for any questions, if anyone has any. But I hope, hope that was informative for you all. Uh, thank you very much, Lani, for the presentation. It was really, really useful, I think. Um, we have one question already. Um, do science labs include psychology labs with its uh, different areas? And if yes, could you please um, tell which areas, like development, cognitive, social, etc.? So for the first part of the question, yes. The low, those labs do cover psychology. In regards to what areas, I'm actually not the best. I don't know. As I mentioned, we have the baby labs, steep labs. So I guess they're more perhaps development, more cognitive, or the MRI machine as well. And we do also, as I said, clinical psychology is quite popular um, amongst us. Um, and so there is the option, I believe, at both undergraduate, but certainly postgraduate. Um, to take a, a module that's basically a clinical placement. Um, so we do offer that um, as well, but I hope that answers um, your question. If you want more information, then feel free to email me, but off the top of my head, um, those are the labs that we have. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I'm checking uh, whether there are further questions. Well, thank you. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in. I'm sure we'll hang around for a bit longer. But as I said, definitely do attend our open day if you're interested. And um, they can definitely answer any more like course specific questions you, that you might have. Yes, uh, I think we covered all, all the parts of the questions. Um, thank you once again for the presentation. And we hope to see you in Turkey soon. Yes, hopefully. Yeah, thanks everyone for having me. Yeah, thank you everyone um, for attending. Hope it was useful. And yeah, hopefully I might might see you either at Royal Huawei or see you in Turkey very soon. But thank, thank you. you. Have a great day. And you. Bye. Bye. Teşekkür ederiz. İyi akşamlar dilerim.